Millen's residence. Is he there? Uh, no, the commissioner's not in. You just missed him. He's out for the evening. May I take it? I've got to reach him now. I don't know where he is at this time. I'll take a look. Hold him now, will you? Just a second. Okay, hello again. I'm not sure if he's there. Look, there's no time. You've got to warn him. His number, it's coming up. His number's coming up? I thought you wanted his number. Hey, old Rob Rob. I want you to check this, Bobo. I've lost weight. I got a first find out which one is you, Herb. <laughs> I told you our kids were never as good looking as me. No, how come? How oh, come? Because on girls, that face doesn't work, Sammy. You haven't even aged. The picture was only taken 20 years ago. Are you sure that girl is leading a cheer? She looks more like she's making a pass. That was Liz Wilson, sweetheart of our fraternity. She looks like she was the sweetheart of the whole team. Is she here tonight? No. She was murdered. The case was never solved. Oh. You know, I was looking forward to this reunion until we got here. Yeah, that used to be me, I think. Well, personally, I'm glad you've aged. That man would look out of place among all my other antiques. <laughs> hey, Joey! <laughs> friends, dear friends, if any of you are interested in what Joey Jumain looked like, 20 years ago? Voila! No. E.C.? Yes. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. And remains so to this very day. The uh, foregoing statement is the opinion of Mr. Joey Germain and is not necessarily the view of the rest of the planet. <laughs> <laughs> Henry, on my way to investigate possible homicide at Pine and Hill. Request backup unit. 10 4. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, may I give you a boom boom? After all, she gave herself at almost every opportunity. Cut it out. Oh, come on, now! Stop acting like a rich, jealous husband, baby. Maybe you're only second string in college, but tonight you're out with the big boys. You're surrounded by the biggest and the bravest. That's right, Joey, that's us. Are they really as big as they look? Or as brave? Tonight's the night, gentlemen. Tonight... Tonight we'll find out. Waiter, give everybody a drink. We're gonna have a special champagne toast to all of us. And without a drink in their hands, these guys at the goal line couldn't keep their mouth shut long enough <laughs> to listen to anybody. And now, if you raise your glasses, gentlemen, and your ladies, I want to propose a toast to days gone by. Days gone by. I'll drink to that. I don't like drinking to your past. I wasn't even a part of it. Tonight should prove you didn't miss a thing. I've chosen this occasion, our team's 20th anniversary, a very special announcement. Well, what is it, Joey? This is the farewell appearance of Joey Germain. Tonight you see him, tomorrow you don't. Are you saying you're already rich enough to retire, Joey? No, Bobo, I'm not retiring from show business. I'm retiring from life. My doctors gave me the bad news last month. First, I thought he was kidding. And it reached me. I started doing a lot of thinking. I made up my mind one thing. And I decided before I go, I was going to tell all of you exactly what I think of you. Boom, boom, ladies first. <laughs> I'm going to start with you. After all, everybody else did. Come on, Joey, lay off. Lay off. Bobo, your language. The lady. Oh, I forgot you're the captain of the team. No one ever spoke to you that way before. All right, that's enough. You're no judge, Mac. You never did appreciate my humor. But then again, you never had to act foolish so that people would notice you. Everything come easy for you, Mac. 
You never had to make a fool out of yourself so you get some attention. What you're still doing, or haven't you noticed? Oh, I know what I'm doing tonight. I know exactly what I'm doing. Yeah, I may be going down, but I'm gonna take the rest of you with me. Heroes. Well, all you heroes, haven't you figured out yet why I asked you to be here tonight? Why I invited you? This may be my farewell appearance, but it's also yours. Those drinks you've been swilling down all night, they should be starting to take effect about now. I always wanted to know how a hero faces death. You might say it was my final wish. I advise you all to stay where you are. You want to last a little longer. Movement makes the poison work that much quicker. Poison. I've got a few things to look forward to, like my 20th reunion. It's all right. All right, we've been poisoned. We've got to call for help. No, that's just exactly what Joey wants us to do. Call in a squad of police. The perfect finale for his little performance. You mean he's not dying? No, and neither are the rest of us. Not even Boom Boom? That's one of the oldest tricks, using accomplices. And I'm sure she was drunk enough to go along with it and hate yourself enough to put up with the insults. Oh, Mac, that's terrible. I warned you, Joy's wit was deadly. Well, I'll never accuse you of exaggerating again. Hello, Mac. <clears throat> oh, he's right here, Sergeant. You may not want to call the police, but they're calling you. Sergeant Enright. Yeah, Charlie. What happened? When? <laughs> hey, you know, Frank and Dottie, they haven't been getting along too good. She complaining that he's never doing anything, don't help around the house, so he goes down to the basement to fix the gas leak, lights a candle, and boom! And blew the two of them right out through the wall. That's the first time they went out together in 20 years. <laughs> I assume the police are on their way, Commissioner? <laughs> Mac, you weren't worried about poor little me. <laughs> I'm afraid I have some bad news. For all of us. There has been a death. Who, Mac? Wally Dixon. What is this, Mac? Payback for my little joke? Sorry, Mac, but when it comes to comedy, you're not in my league. No. We're in my league now. Wally was murdered. Shot to death in a phone booth. Up, that it wouldn't be Wally. Have you talked to him lately, sir? We had a postcard from him a few weeks ago. Said he was looking forward to the reunion. Where did he live, sir? Colorado. We had a beautiful place. Mac went fishing there once. Yeah. When was the last time you saw him? Oh, it had to be a couple of years. He was here on a business trip. I'm afraid we didn't have much to say to each other at that time, unfortunately. Well, sir, he must have had something he wanted to say to you tonight. Apparently, he was dialing your number when he was killed. That card was found in his hand. It's got your name and number on it. Find out where he was staying. Check his room. I want to know every move he made after he got to town. Yes, sir, right away. 
I'm very sorry to have ruined your reunion with this call. Don't worry about it, Sergeant. The reunion was ruined before you called. Good night. Good night. just said he wanted to tell you that your number was coming up. I wrote it down here. Hair's a crime. Loose top awning? That's not what he said. Boy, that must have been some reunion you guys went to tonight. What'd you have to drink? The usual. A little champagne. A little poison. Yeah. You don't have to talk to me about catered food. Mildred, the note. Here's a crime loose top awning? That's what I said. Mildred, you've got to start wearing your glasses when you go to the phone. I can see the phone. I mean when you take messages. Uh, would you try remembering what he said? I wrote it down. We can't read it. Yeah, it's a point. Well, I know he was in a big rush. I mean, at least I remember that much of it. Here, let me try. I haven't done one of these in a long time. Thank goodness. Here's a crime. Here's a crime. Here's, there's, there's no time? Well, that's it. That's what he said. There's no time. Of course, it's so simple. <laughs> Will you stop congratulating yourself and get on with it? Well, he wasn't making an awful lot of sense, but he did say he wanted to talk to you, to warn you. Loose top awning. Loose top awning. Loose, use, use. You've got to warn him. There's no time. You've got to warn him. Mrs. McMillan, you are terrific. I mean, really terrific. You should have been a policeman. Is that all that he said? Here's the note. You can read it for yourself, you know. Of course, he did say your number was coming up, but I didn't want to put that part down. Why not? Well, you wouldn't want me to leave any incriminating evidence lying around the house, would you? Mildred, what are you talking about? What incriminating evidence? Oh, listen, I'm reasonably sophisticated. I mean, I read all the papers, I watch a little TV, and I know all about corruption in higher places. And if the commissioner is mixed up in a little numbers racket, well, nobody's going to learn about it from me. Thank you, Mildred. I appreciate that. You do? Certainly. With prices going sky high, I have to cut down on a few luxuries, like get rid of a housekeeper, or else find a little uh, extra money. Enough, Mildred. He's just teasing. Are you? Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, that's a relief. You really thought he was in the numbers racket? Well, in these times, why not? I mean, after all, he's just a police commissioner. Don't pursue it. I won't. Till later. Listen now, tell me, who's starving and who's merely hungry? We're not hungry. We've already eaten. No, no, catered food. I asked you to stay away from that stuff. No, it was room service in the hotel suite. Even worse. I'm going to make some sandwiches, a little hot soup. Get your food away. Hello? Yeah, Bobo, we're waiting for you. You what? How serious? We'll be right over. What is it? Come in. Oh, I knew I shouldn't have called you. Well, you didn't have to come. It's just a scratch. Yeah. Just like Max said, a lot more than a little scratch. Well, which is why I brought uh, Florence Nightingale. And she'll have you in traction if you don't keep an eye on her. Well, a girl has to keep in practice. You know that cop practically ran me down? 
was like playing USC all over again. You mean that car actually drove up on the sidewalk? I should have been more on guard. Guess I lived in a small town too long. Since when is Omaha a small town? At least they don't go on the sidewalk after you. Well, they don't make a habit of it here, either. Mac? Hmm? The dead man. Was it Wally? Mm-hmm. Any ideas why? None. His wallet was found in his hip pocket. Plenty of cash in it. Well, do you think there was any connection between him and the rest of us? No, Bobo, relax. Joey's bad joke just made you a little jumpy, that's all. Jumpy? I feel like I'm taking my life in my hand every time I go outside. I'll do my best to make you change your mind. Oh, Mac, it wasn't your fault. It was just a lousy reunion. Half a dozen of the guys didn't even show up. And I thought we were all going to make it. I think some people just don't like looking back. Yeah. I guess I'm just missing George. Yeah, I was sorry to hear about him, too. You know, he called me from Cincinnati a couple of days before it happened. We were going to share a room together. Man, he was really looking forward to seeing all the guys again. What happened? Actually, it was a lot like what happened to Wally. He was mugged, too. They didn't take anything from him, either. Hey, Bobo. Why don't you stay with us till after the reunion? What a great idea. We've got plenty of room. Look, it's only a scratch. Bobo, this bandage has to be changed every 24 hours. OK, but I can't give up this room. As old George would say, I paid for it, and I'm going to sleep in it. <laughs> Boy, was he tight. <laughs> <laughs> you still hang on to him, Mac? Anything you can show. I want you to know that you married one of the best receivers we ever had. Yeah, I thought I got a good catch. Thanks for the bandage. Yeah. Now, I left you that first aid stuff. You change that bandage yourself, OK? All right. Come on, Bobo. See you tomorrow. Good night. Good night. Mac, we've really got to do something to get this reunion off the ground. I'm glad you suggested it. What did I suggest? A party tomorrow night at our house. What a good idea. And all mine. You know that Bobo's a nice man. He never married? He was in love with Liz Wilson. I don't think he ever got over it. The cheerleader that was murdered? Mm -hmm. Were they engaged? No, she was the kind of girl who never promised anything to anybody. Oh, that kind of behavior can get a girl in trouble. And did. A lot of people think a secret lover killed her. That's why I always say yes. What a good idea. And all yours. I have to get Mildred to start making arrangements for that party. Sleep. Nothing. I couldn't bear to hear another voice. Have you even thought about the carpets and the draperies? No, I hadn't thought about them in months. Why? Well, if we're going to give a party in this place, they have to be cleaned. Don't you keep them clean? Commissioner, please, this is woman talk. Excuse us, please. Can't we talk about this in the morning? I have to start cooking at dawn. Mildred, I don't think anyone's going to notice the carpets or the drapes. Some of these people haven't seen each other in 20 years. Well, that's exactly my point. The commissioner has come a long way since college, and these people expect something from a man in his position, and we have to keep up appearances. Yes, Mildred, but if you're cooking, no one will look at anything else but the table. Well, you're the boss. You took the words right out of my mouth. Good night, Mildred. Listen, we haven't even discussed the menu. Discuss it in the morning. It can't wait till morning if I'm to do any comparative shopping. Forget about the comparative shopping. Oh, forget about it. Well, that's easy for you to say. You who left a high-paying law practice to take a low-paying job with a long title, and I'm the one that has to live with the budget. But that's my job, and I accept it. I'd stop for compliments, but we don't have time. Mildred, please, can't we get just a little sleep? Could you turn out the light on your way out, Mildred? Forget comparative shopping. Well, how 
halibut ranging in price from $1.78 to $2.89 a pound? You're going to serve halibut? No. But as the halibut goes, so goes the shrimp. I better go down now and start comparing prices. You're going to go downtown tonight? No, no, no. Downstairs. There's a new TV channel. They give you comparative grocery prices all night long. You wouldn't believe the price range on T-bone steaks in this town. Will you get out of here? Right, Commissioner. Just leave the entire thing in my hands. It will be the best buffet that money can buy in all of San Francisco. And rest assured that none of your old friends will know what a low-paying job you have. <laughs> I'm afraid that's all there is on Wally Dixon, sir. He'd barely hit town. Do you think there's any connection? Well, between Wally's death and what happened to Boba? Yes, sir. No, I don't think so. Wait a minute. I just don't want to think there's any connection. Yes? Mr. Bobo Johnson on 613, sir. Oh, thank you. Hello, Bobo. How are you feeling? Matt, I gotta see you right away. What's wrong? I think I got this whole thing figured out. When you're in the computer business, your brain reduces everything to numbers. Numbers? What do you mean? I have to show you. I have it all worked out. I would come to your office, but if my theory is correct, it's not safe for me to leave this place. I'll be right there. on my list. as long as you can. We'll stay here all day if that's the way you want to play it.
I noted Sally home. Uh, no, I don't think she's here now, but I'll tell her you call, Mrs. Crenshaw. Uh, hi, Carol. I just got back. No good. Right. Well, welcome home. Uh, yes, I guess I didn't see her come back. Oh, come on, oh, Carol. Sally, why didn't you tell me that you enjoyed Jermaine? Were intimates? Intimates? I just met him. Well, that counts. Now, why didn't you tell me? <sighs> How did you find out? How do you suppose? The hard way. I read it in the morning newspaper. And there was a picture of Police Commissioner McMillan and Joy Germain and my darling Sally. And it was all about your 20th reunion or something. Mac's 20th reunion or something. Oh, who counts? Well, anyway, I'm furious with you. I mean, why don't you tell a girl anything? Listen, if you see a girl, you'll tell her, right? That Mildred's such a kidder. I know. Now, look, Sally, you've got to go right to the phone and call Joey. Call Joey? Well, sure. Well, unless you'd prefer to drive over. I mean, I've got my car. Carol, <clears throat> I would prefer never to see that man again. Oh, Sally, don't be absurd. Why, he is perfect for our benefit. And let's face it, we've got nobody except that ex-singer, ex-alcoholic. You know, I always forget which brought him to fame first. Singing or drinking? <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, Sally. With Joey Germain, we might make a little money. Carol, I heard he doesn't even do benefits. Sally, everybody does benefits. Everybody doesn't like to do benefits, but everybody does benefits. Think of the little deaf children. Carly? You're right. Let's see. Let's see. I'm not saying I suspect one of my teammates. I'm just saying there has to be a connection. Bobo was killed within minutes after calling me. Wally was trying to reach me when he was killed. Two members of the same team killed within 12 hours of each other. Well, of course, it means something, but what? I don't know. I want a rundown on every teammate who didn't make the reunion. You mean where they are now, sir? That's right. If he's supposed to be in London, then make sure he's in London. If he's dead, make sure of that, too. Mildred, if anybody calls, tell them I'll be back in about an hour. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm going with you. No, I'm not going shopping. You're passing right by that rotten shop that sold me these rotten melons, and I'm taking them back. Mildred, I'll be gone about an hour. How will you get home? I'll wait for you. You're going to wait for me for an hour with all the things you've got to do around the house. Well, I'd take my car, but I'd only get four miles to the gallon. What would the president say about that? You get 16. Sorry. Right. You know something you ought to do this more often. I mean, for instance, why not every time you leave the house, I'll just go with you till the energy crisis is over, okay? Or until the commissioner gets me that compact he promised me. Then we can get rid of my gas guzzler. Hi, Joey. Listen, I didn't know you were having a party. You should have told me when I called. Oh, well, come on in, sweetheart. There's nobody here. Well, how many pretty girls do you need for a party? A tape recording? Of just applause and laughter? Yeah. Do you ever hear a sweeter sound? That's me in Las Vegas. You hear them people? Listen to this. Chicago. That's Chicago. Listen to that. Listen to this one. That's Lake Tahoe in the middle of a blizzard, and they came from all over. The people came from all over to listen to me. Listen to them people. What can I say? Well, you might say congratulations. Congratulations, Joey. Well, now that I've heard it, can we turn it on? Off? Never off. Maybe I'll turn it down a little, but i never turn it off. Hey. How about a drink, sexy? No, thank you. How about if I apologize? Would you have a drink with me then? Apologize for what? For frightening you last night. I just couldn't resist the opportunity to show what fakes those overblown demon are. Unfortunately, your old man didn't buy it. Yeah, Max's reaction disappointed you, didn't it? Well, what good is a mass murder when the policemen don't show up? Mac knows your humor too well to get caught off guard by it. He's a fan of yours, Joey. Big fan of mine. Comics should be allowed to make contracts on fans like that. Anyone that kills a joke should get killed himself. 
Was that the point of last night? The point of last night. The point of last night was to let those bums know that I don't like them any better than they like me. However, with Wally's death, my joke made me suspect number one. Wow. You know what your problem is, Joey? You don't give people a chance to like you. Okay, here's your chance. Joey, I'm trying to like you, despite the way you behave. I thought you felt the same way about me and Mac. I'm sorry I was wrong. Well, wait a minute, don't go now. You just went up a thousand percent to my estimation. Oh, spare me from dames who don't have the good taste to spurn my passes. Okay, what's the favor? What? The favor. You called, you came by, you wanted something, remember? We're giving a telethon, a benefit, for the clinic where I work. It's for the deaf children. A telethon benefit? You want Joey Germain to give it away? Joey, it's all been a mistake. I'm sorry I came. Well, I'm glad you did. I'm just sorry you're leaving. You know, I almost think you mean that. I gotta go. I gotta get ready for the party that we're giving tonight. Well, you didn't tell me uh, when to come or where? Tonight, 6.30 at our house. N not to the party. To your dumb telethon benefit thing. You're gonna do it? Well, I figure if you can give three, four days a week for deaf kids, I ought to be able to give one night. Thank you, Joey. Hey, hey, what, ain't you married? Yeah. Well, then, why, why do you, what do you, uh... Seven members of the team didn't show up, Commissioner. That includes George Brown, who we know was killed two weeks ago in Cincinnati, mm -hmm. and Paul Masters. He overdosed last week. The police are still investigating. Now, with those two exceptions, the rest of the team is where it's supposed to be. Paul Masters dead? Four men in this photograph, suddenly dead. First, George Brown, then Paul Masters, and then... George Brown, Paul Masters, Wally Dixon, and Bobo. Well, of course that's it. What's it, sir? The lead Bobo gave me. Of course he'd seen it. He worked with numbers all his life. Look, George Brown, number 11. Paul Masters, number 17. Wally Dixon, number 24. And then Bobo, number 28. The team's being murdered in numerical sequence? You don't have to be a mathematician to figure that out. Although Wally did teach Mac. He could have known about George and Paul. I knew about George. So when the killer went after him, well, that's why he was trying to call me. But, Commissioner, why would anybody kill an entire football team in sequence? Who'd even remember the numbers after all these years? Anybody connected with the team. Your number is your name when you play football. The coach may forget your name, but he never forgets your number. Where is that coach, anyway? Well, he's, he died about 10 years ago. Now, if my theory is correct, number 35 is next. That's Sammy Warren. Let's put out a 24-hour guard on him. Yes, sir, right away. By the way, Commissioner, what was your number? 38. Well, are there any other numbers between 35 and 38? None. My number is coming up, as Wally pointed out. Where were you? It's my trip, remember? So what happened? You wouldn't take the melons back, huh? Oh, sure, he took them back. These are the fresh ones. Not without a fight, however. Shopping is not what it used to be. What'd you have to say to him? Oh, I had to get a little rough. What did you say to him? Okay, I used the commissioner's name. What did you say? I told him that the commissioner made me bring them back. And the commissioner would have, too, if he'd seen them. I mean, selling melons like those is a crime. And that beautiful chocolate cake that you got us during the baker's strike? Did you use Mac's name to get that, too? No, Mrs. McMillan. I got the cake with my legs.
Any word on Sammy yet? Sorry, sir, but we still haven't been able to locate him. He and his wife seem to be out sightseeing. Well, keep trying. We have to find him first. Yes, sir. But just in case, don't you think we should put a tail on you, too? Well, we'll worry about that after we find Sammy. Yes, sir. Commissioner McMillan. Let me speak to Sergeant Enright. Enright here. Any word on Sammy yet? Commissioner, we just talked a couple of minutes ago. Well, I thought you should know. If you find him now and he's okay, we've just blown our theory. How's that, sir? Because I found our killer. Where, sir? Right behind me. I mean, maybe I ought to put the deli on alert. You know, a couple of pounds of roast beef, a couple of pounds of pastrami, just to back us up. Mildred, these people are invited for cocktails, not for dinner. I know you love athletes, but this is ridiculous. I also know a little bit about the care and feeding of athletes, and each one has an appetite for ten. But do their wives. There's Mac. I'll see you. Hi, Mac. Hiya. None for me. I'm really sorry about Bobo. I tried to call you today. I thought maybe we should have canceled this evening. No, I'd rather have everyone together. Then there is a connection. I'm afraid so. You know, I think Bobo had the feeling that his number was up last night. His number was up, and your number is coming up. Are you sure we're talking about football, Commissioner? Rock, are you saying that the members of the team are being killed in sequence according to their numbers? Well, whose number's after Bobo's? If my theory is correct, it's Sammy Warren. He's in 
number 35. So I ordered a 24-hour police protection for him. 24-hour police protection? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Better double up on the hawk on all that. Your number's 38. Does that mean you come next after Sammy? We don't know what the killer is doing yet, so we'll catch him. Don't worry. Do you think he's going to try anything at the party tonight? No, I don't think it's likely that anybody would kill a whole team at once. Except Joey Germain. And Joey is a suspect. Everyone on the team is a suspect. Only Joey is the least likely. Anyone who announces his motives publicly and then stages a mock demonstration isn't likely to have done it. Well, I'm glad. Oh? I thought you were through with Joey after last night. Why the change? He agreed to do a benefit for our charity. Oh, well, that's his most suspicious move so far. Well, he said he wasn't going to do it for charity. He said he was going to do it for me. That explains everything, doesn't it? Yes, I thought it did. You know, he could be just a nice guy who doesn't want anybody to know it. He doesn't have to worry. No one does. What about Al Parkins? What about Al Parkins? Well, he could have a motive if what Joey said about his wife Boom Boom is true. Her name's Helen. I've never heard anybody call her anything else but Boom Boom. I'm afraid no one ever has. Except you. Except me. Well, is it true what Joey said? Yeah, Al has a motive. But then so does Boom Boom. I never think of a woman as a murderer. Oh? Isn't that what women's lib is all about? Seeing women as everything? You know, we better get dressed. They're going to be getting here soon. Hello? Yeah, and right. Oh, you found Sammy. Is he all right? Um, any attempts on his life? Oh, good. Listen, Charlie. I think you better come on over. Stick around for the party. Now that our theory's blown, we don't know where the killer will strike next. Yeah. Any word on the red sedan? Well, keep trying. No, there's no description. He was wearing a ski mask. But whoever he is, you can be sure he'll show up in our house as my guest tonight. You know, that's the best pass you ever made. Well, the funny thing about that, you see, I was supposed to get the ball and hand off to the left. <laughs> I was supposed to hand off to the left, you know? Ah, uh, thank you. And, and then I... I just kept falling myself, you see. And, and back this room looks like a walking ad for Al's jewelry store. Thank you. Ooh, more meatballs. Fantastic. I thought you were on a diet. Yeah, well, I am. But with one exception, when I'm around your cooking. Oh, well, in that case, try the pate. It's an old family recipe. Hi, Sergeant. Hi, Joey. Hi. I was beginning to think you weren't coming. Well, after last night, I didn't know if I could ever face that team again. I wouldn't worry about it, Joey. Most of these people came in bed this morning. I had to mention last night. I get that way plenty myself sometimes. You were the team manager, weren't you? Yeah, I was. And look at me now. I can't even manage myself. What was your number? Number? Managers don't have numbers. Just the big shot players. Why do you ask? Oh, I was just curious. But if I did have a number, it would have been number one. That's the only number Joey Germain will settle for. Numero uno. That's me, sweetheart. Come on, numero uno. I'll get you a drink. I hope we got big ones. Yeah. I'm sorry you couldn't find us this afternoon, Mac. That's the trouble. I want to put a couple of men on you, Sammy. We'll be waiting outside when you leave. You mean police protection? Mm-hmm. Well, I really am frightened. Why me? Well, if there's a sequence to these murders, so far there seems to be, your number's next. We were out all day and nobody tried anything. 
course, I did have my hair done late this afternoon. What about Ben, Sammy? No, nothing. I just waited for you. Where did you wait? Well, where husbands usually wait for their wives, in a bar around the corner. Maybe the killer stopped with Bobo Mac. Maybe he's not after the whole team. No. But there is the possibility that he skipped Sammy. Why do you think he'd miss Sammy? Who's next? I am. And I thought the only thing we had to dread this weekend were the prophecy papers. Prophecy papers? You mean Mac never told you about the prophecy papers? No. Oh, Mac, what secret do you have to reveal? What are they? Oh, a bunch of us got together at the end of school and wrote prophecies about what the next 20 years would hold for us. Only now, 20 years later, I don't even remember what I wrote. I remember the questions. Uh, how much are you going to be worth in 20 years? How many times will you be married? What's your wife going to look like? Do you mean to tell me that they're going to read those prophecies out loud at the banquet tomorrow? For all to hear. And if you think Joey made fools of us last night, wait till you hear what we do to ourselves tomorrow. <laughs> Well, is there any chance of getting an advanced look at those prophecies? Not until tomorrow. Exactly 20 years later, they're in a vault in the bank. Mm-hmm. Do you remember any of your answers? You're not going to hold me accountable for something I said 20 years ago, are you? Well, that depends. On what? On what you wrote 20 years ago. <laughs> you get away from me. Oh. You and me should have teamed up for life, you know that? For life? Oh. I was never anything but halftime entertainment for any of you bums. You always had your ladies waiting for you after the games. None of them gonna ever touch you, sweetheart. <laughs> but they're the only ones. Everyone else sure did. Well, suppose you were so sweet and so accommodating, boom boom. Because you always made it so easy for us. Uh -huh. That guy better be careful who he's fooling around with. Her husband was very jealous, and I happen to know he's carrying a gun. Yeah, well, we know that, Mildred. He's a jeweler. He's got a permit for it. I've been married three times. <gasps> yeah. My third wife just walked out on me last month, just when I was planning this trip. You're the only woman in my whole life I don't regret. <laughs> <laughs> Touchdown! It's hard to believe you never made the first string. That's enough. What's the matter, Matt? Can't you wait your turn? Nobody stops me tonight. Listen, I never went to college. Maybe I shouldn't be watching. There wasn't a player in this whole lousy team that hasn't scored with my wife. Now it's my turn to get even. Stay where you are! Don't move! Anybody got an idea what it's like to live with a woman a whole team has left behind? Tonight you're gonna find out. Sammy, you have two choices. You can either have your wife back used like mine or, uh, dead like Liz Wilson. Yeah. Oh, you're, you're mad at me. What are you taking that on Sammy? Come on, Al. Come on down. Stop him, Sammy. He means it. You heard the match? He's not kidding. I know. That's why you're staying here. Al. Give me the gun. Take one more step, and I'll really give it to you. I started all this. You didn't have. I did. A long time ago. No. No. We're never like the others. Never. Don't change now. Please, honey.
Do you know? On my very first date, you always treated me like a girl you were going to marry. I'm proud to be married to you, Al. Isn't you proud? And I know, I know you feel the same about me. Don't turn. Don't stop now. I'm begging you. I love you so much. Come on, darling. Let's go home. Hey, where's your whiskey? Some athletes. I never met an athlete without an appetite. That must have been some bum team. What did him do with all this food? It would be nice if we could have a wake tomorrow. It's always that possibility. Well, at least it's very clear who hates the team as much as Joey. Makes a person think twice before going out for sports. I thought all my enemies came after college, when I started practicing law. You never really know, do you? What about Sammy? I mean, the killer stopped with him. That means he could be the killer, right? Well, why would he kill in sequence and then skip himself? Well, why would he kill in sequence and include himself? Mm -hmm. Maybe he deliberately made himself the obvious suspect, like you said about Joey, thinking that you'd never suspect the obvious. I suspect everybody. When one person is killed, you've got one motive. But the whole team, the motives are endless. You know, you may just have something there. One person. One person? It's not one person. He's out to get the whole team. Yes, but suppose he really only wanted one person. He's already killed four. Well, maybe that was just to disguise his motive. Do you mean that he really only wants one person dead? That's possible. Killed the rest just to confuse us. Well, how can you tell which person he had the real motive for killing? That's the problem. And for that matter, the one he wants dead may still be alive. Oh, that's a cheery thought. I was thinking we might have another party tomorrow, Mrs. McMillan. This time for your friends, people with appetites. Like that, a do hope with Mrs. Crenshaw. I think that would be a great idea, Mildred, except tomorrow is taken. You see, tomorrow I am going to find out exactly who Mac was really going to marry. Did I miss something? I mean, did something happen here tonight beside what happened here tonight? Is there somebody else? I think that's my question, Mildred. And the answer is yes. Well, personally, I'm not surprised or shocked. I'm stunned. All I did was make a wish, Mildred, and that was 20 years ago, long before I ever met Sally. Well, I made the mistake of writing it down. And tomorrow, at the team banquet, it's going to be read out loud. Well, no point holding till tomorrow. Why not tell it all now? Frankly, I've been braced for it since the day you married her. Tell me, Commissioner, what is the time limit on annulments? About the same as the statute of limitations, I hope? Come on, Commissioner, what'd you write? I can't remember. I told you it was 20 years ago. You can't remember? How could you forget something so important? M Mildred, when one has a dream, and then when one wakes up to find someone much lovelier than any dream lying beside one, well... <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, what a line. Mildred. The line was meant for me. I kind of liked it. Yeah, well, who can account for taste, right? You know, Mac, if you really can't remember what you wrote, I think you're just about the only one. Well, you can sure tell that Sammy remembers what he wrote. Sally, that's the motive. You've just provided the killer with a motive. The prophecy papers. Of course. He wouldn't want them read aloud. 
really wouldn't want them read aloud. In fact, couldn't risk having them read aloud. Well, why would he have to kill to keep the prophecy papers from being read? Because they won't be taken out of the bank until tomorrow, and then only by our president. Who's your president? Well, Bobo Johnson was. And Bobo was the one that the killer wanted dead. Well, he had to hide his motives by killing three other members. Mac, if the president can't pick up the papers, then who does? The vice president. Who's the vice president? I can't remember. You can't remember that either? Well, who remembers vice presidents? Oh, that's true. If only I should remember this one. Because he's our killer. <laughs> Commissioner, the men won't be meeting at the bank until noon. That's three hours from now. What's your suggestion, Charlie? Get a writ. Open the vault, open the box, and read that letter. The letter by itself might not be enough. What we need is a way to trap him. Yes, but how, sir? We've got just three hours to figure it out. Oh, yes. Very good, sir. Hi, Mildred. You ready? Yeah. Where are you going? With you. I'm going to the television studio. Perfect. You can drop me off. Where? To save a lot. I've got to return these. How do you return olives? Well, I didn't open them. And anyway, I bought them on consignment. You bought olives on consignment? Have you priced olives lately? You can't afford to buy them any other way. Mildred, I'm in too much of a hurry. OK. Uh, look, don't worry about me. I can walk. You're going to walk to save a lot? There's seven hills between here and there. What are you trying to do, make me feel guilty? I thought you'd never notice. You know, sometimes I wonder if you and the commissioner notice the many things I do for you that I'm not paid to do. Mildred, we notice. Sometimes we even talk about it. So do your friends, let me tell you. And some friends. You'd be shocked to know how many job offers I get after every big party, like last night. It's embarrassing. And those friends sneaking back into the kitchen to try and hire me away from you. But rest easy, Mrs. McMillan. I wouldn't leave you and the commissioner for anything. Are you sure, Mildred? Mm-hmm. One thing always stops me. What's that? Nobody will match your salary. <laughs> Tape. Now, Joey, what we're going to do is we're going to tape your segment now and then insert it later. So it doesn't matter how long you want to make it. And also, you don't have to be funny. Well, I'm always funny. Just like you two are always beautiful. Oh, that's sweet, Joey. Mm. I tell you, if they had you in my size, I'd take in every color. <laughs> Come on, Carol. You better go. Excuse us, Joey. Now, get on the mark. Countdown. Yep. Countdown. Ready, camera three. Take three. Ready, Q. Q. Well, Sally, who is our next charming guest? Carol, we have the great honor of having with us today the comedian of comedians, Mr. Joey Germain. Welcome, Joey. Tough luck. One of them's married to a friend of mine, and the other one's too smart for me. Would you believe that when I was a young fella, I didn't do too good with girls? In fact, I was once on a show on Broadway. Maybe some of you have seen it. Uh, in the Broadhurst Theater. That was a long, long time ago. And there was a fellow leading man across the street, and I said to him, would you make me a date with a girl? He said, sure. And he made me a date with a girl. She was so pretty. When I saw she had a date with me, I felt sorry for her. We met in this little place. She wore a rose. She came in, I looked at her, I couldn't talk. Now with millions of people, I could talk like a son of a gun, but alone with a girl, I couldn't talk. And then I remember Charles Boyer never had a talk. He had a vein in the forehead. And when he aimed that vein at a girl, she fell apart. What I needed was a vein. And I scratched my forehead with a fingernail to create that vein, a welt. In my zeal, I went a little deep, and my eye filled up with blood. I tried to cauterize the wound. I took the candle off the table and set fire to my hair. Took half a bottle of wine and put it out. It was terrible. But what I really came here to say, you 
You didn't hear that, did you? Of course, I didn't say anything. But if I had, there are so many children, adults too, who don't hear what I said. It's the reason for this telethon, to raise money so people can hear, at least with their eyes, and talk, at least with their hands. So let's hear you do something. Let's hear your pocketbook open. Let's hear your coins jangle if all you've got is coins. Let's hear your folding money unfold if all you've got is folding money, or if you can give us some. Or let's hear your pen squeak in a checkbook and send it in, send it in. And those noises, they'll make you hear a noise, it'll make you feel good, it'll be your heart opening up, which will sound so much like the gates of heaven. That'll do wonders, I know. Hope so. What are you doing here? Suppose I ask the same of you. <laughs> you forgot the rules, Mac. The president, or rather now the vice president, has to be accompanied by the secretary and treasurer. So now it's your turn again. Why are you here? You're nobody. Team-wise, that is. Well, let's just say I'm here to give the prophecies an official escort. Oh, come on, admit it. You're as nervous about yours as the rest of us are. Only no peeking allowed, Mac. Not even for a police commissioner. What we really need is an accountant to swear that the envelope has remained sealed. Hey, Joey. How about this? Mac showed up to provide police protection for the prophecy papers. How's that for a laugh? Not so good, but isn't that just like the police? They're always around when everything's fine and you can't find them when you're in trouble. <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid all of us will be happy to leave your fair city, Mac. Yeah, Joey even canceled his act here. In fact, he was already packed to leave when I called him this morning. He was going to skip the luncheon until I reminded him we needed a signature to have the box open. I even forgot I was vice president. I doubt if you forgot, Joey. In fact, I'm convinced you knew all along what I finally figured out last night. What's that, Mac? That the motive for the murders is in that box. What are you talking about, Mac? I'm talking about a man determined not to have his prophecy read. So determined he murdered four people just so he could be in this room to substitute a new prophecy. Well, I'm here because Bobo's dead and I'm next in line, that's all. What about the other three murders, Joey? What about them? I'm a comedian, remember? You're the police commissioner. Don't look at me. Oh, I didn't look at you, Joey, for a long time because I didn't know where to look. So many deaths had me fooled. <sighs> Oh, come on, Mac. No, I'm not looking forward to the prophecies either. I mean, listening to my plans for the future, what a big shot I was going to be. But I wouldn't kill anybody over it, neither would Joey. Wouldn't he now? What makes you so sure he would? I'm not sure. First, we'll have to see his prophecy. Well, you're going to have to wait till lunch, because that's when I'm going to read him. I know. Which means that the only time to make a switch would be now, between here and the luncheon. Well, what if I did switch prophecies? I mean, just suppose that I don't want to be embarrassed either. 
Just suppose. How could you prove it? How would you even know? The best way would be to check now. To see if you have a substitute prophecy on you. Wait a minute, they... You would search me? <laughs> you mean you would... You mean you'd frisk me down? You'd give me one of these? You'd, <laughs> you'd search my whole body? You'd give me a... <laughs> like this? Turn around. Face the wall. You want to tell us your prophecy, Joey? Why not? It said that we would be married and live happily ever after. You and uh, Liz Wilson? Yeah, me and the mysteriously murdered cheerleader. Yeah. I was so sure of her, I even put it in my prophecy. I described our life, my wife, together, me and Liz. I never thought Liz was ever serious about anybody. She wasn't until she'd be alive to me. She lied to me. She used to say, it'll just be our secret, because she didn't mean it, because she was teasing. But I meant it, and I showed her, didn't I? And I got away with it. I hated you all so openly. You eliminated me as a suspect, didn't you? Admit it. Until today, yes. And did I ever love hating you? And oh, please let me go, please. You you've made a terrible mistake. I'm in new accounts. I don't handle cash. I don't want any cash. Well, of course you want cash. What kind of a robber are you? I don't think it's fair for her to have to die because she don't handle any cash. You explain it to her, Mac, but let her down easy. Tell her she's talking to the wrong person when it comes to fair play. You tell her! on the one yard line again. You know, Matt, there's one thing that still puzzles me. Mm. If Joey wanted to look like he was killing the team in sequence, then why did he skip Sammy? Sammy's number 35. You're number 38. Liz's arm blocked my number, made my 38 look like a 33. Which means Liz made a fool out of Joey again. After all these years. Ah, uh, still together, uh, I see. Shall we have a snack to celebrate? Mildred, we just came from a banquet. Oh, a luncheon. A banquet at noon. So have a little something to get you through till dinner. We're skipping dinner. You're skipping dinner? Is this America or isn't it? It was a seven-course meal. And every course catered, and that simply doesn't count. Well, it counts if you ate it. Uh, Mildred, Sally and I are going to take a little nap, if you don't mind. Oh, good. That always makes you hungry. Uh, do I take it that you uh, married the right girl after all? 
Mildred, you should have heard Max prophecies. It was wonderful. It described me to a T. But I was a little curious. I wonder if uh, 